Sure, again, thanks for everyone. Uh, thanks to everyone for joining us. Um, some quick thoughts on the, the West Virginia game, you know, after watching the tape. You know, I thought our guys played really hard. Um, you know, I thought our guys, uh, the playmakers in, in our on our team, made the, the plays that needed to be made when the game uh, w w was on the line. You know, the big interception by Jacorian, uh, Rocks, touchdown catch on third and five, Leah, you know, played his butt off. And then uh, Fleet Davis's run there to finish the game on the field. You know, because of that, um, you know, I can just tell you that you know, there's still a lot of things on the film after watching that needs to be corrected. And it's always good to be able to correct things after a win. Uh, it's a little easier. And, uh, you know, we got to shore up our kickoff coverage unit, obviously. Um, you know, on the offensive side of the ball, red zone scoring. The goal was to score touchdowns and, and not kick field goals. We left some points there. And then, you know, defensively, I thought we played really well in the second half. but. We uh, had four penalties on defense, and one of them cost us about four points. And uh, you know, some with the uh, offsides penalties, and then the uh, taunting. And you know, those are the things that kind of don't sit well. And we'll continue to, to coach and work through those things. I also want to again shout out our um, fans. You know, in, in particular the student section. You know, they have no idea the impact that they had on the game with it being a, a good game there in the fourth quarter with the noise and the energy that they brought. And, you know, as I talked to our team um, this week, you know, after a big win against a, a border rival and now bringing in a local uh, opponent like Howard University, um, the goal for us is to not play the team, but to play to the standard. And uh, that's been our, our talk with our team throughout the course of the summer. You know, we set standards and we play the standards. We don't play the opponent. And so I think the same can be said for our fans. Uh, they've set the standard for what the shell could be and should look like in terms of the energy, the atmosphere. I mean, I've, I've had numer numerous recruits who were there at the game talk about just the effect of having a, a full stadium and our student section being there for four quarters. And so, again, you know, it was great to see that. And I know our players really appreciate it, and they did have an impact in the game uh, with the, the, the energy that they brought there in the fourth quarter. Um, you know, as with all things, though, it's a 24-hour deal. We're back to neutral and obviously on to our Howard preparation. Um, we got one injury update. You know, Fanage Gote had his uh, MRI today. Uh, with yesterday being closed, he didn't get one until today and has a significant upper body injury that will uh, require surgery. And so Fanage Gote won't be available um, for us. Um, but we have some young talent at that position. Uh, as we've created some depth, guys like Brendan Jennings, who came in and made a big play there, forced the fumble. Uh, Lucita Smith, uh, you know, coming in there as well. And then, um, you know, Jeremy Sprague and his worm also got its rep there. And, and we're hopefully uh, able to get Ahmad McCullough back going into this week, which will create, you know, some depth for us there at the inside linebacker. Um, always special to host a, a local team like Howard. Um, Larry Scott is one of my good friends in his business. Uh, you know, I got a tremendous amount of respect for him and the job he's done. He's been around uh, some great programs and, and does a really good job. And when you watch their team on tape, they're very well coached. I know he'll have his team ready to play. Uh, also, uh, we'll be remiss if we didn't reflect that uh, this game will be significant in the fact that it's played on 9-11, which, you know, as a young coach who was here when 9-11 took place, uh, you know, many of our players were, were three years old, I think, was the average age of the guys when I brought it up because uh, I did think it was important for me to talk to our players about the significance of 9-11 and being here in D.C. in this area. Obviously, we were affected um, with the Pentagon uh, being attacked, and I kind of addressed it with our team about the significance of what it means and, and how uh, it affected a lot of people here in this area, if not in the country. Um, because of that, we'll be wearing a special helmet decal um, that was uh, designed by you know players on our team, and I, I can tell you that uh, you know it, it, it'll be in the back of our minds, and it, we, we also, as a program, understand just how important it was. But to pay honor to those that lost their lives, we'll have a, a helmet decal on our helmet. Um, the game captains are, are Chigo Conquo, uh, Lotez Rogers, and Joseph Petrino will serve as our game captains. And I guess uh, with that, I'll open up to any questions.
hands, if you have questions, we have mics on each side. Start with Dave, to your right. Mike, kind of going off on the 20th anniversary of 9-11, you were here as an assistant. I think it was Fridge's first year as well. How did he, what was it like as a young coach to all of a sudden experience all that? And how did uh, Frid, how did Fridge's leadership kind of, you know, help these young kids who are away from home move on and wind up having an absolutely outstanding season? Yeah, we did. And, you know, I can remember like yesterday, it was we were in meetings for West Virginia preparation, um, a game that was eventually canceled. but. Um, we had a couple of players on the team, Sal Aragona, uh, as well as Melvin Fowler, whose brother um, at the time was working in the World Trade Center. I think Sal's dad had a hot dog stand at the bottom of it. Um, and I just remember initially the plane flying into the World Trade Center and then a few, whatever, many minutes later, uh, Carol Henry, our administrative assistant at the time, coming in saying that the Pentagon had just had something happen. And that's when we all as a staff kind of left the meeting rooms because we were in our preparation for the game and uh, went and checked on you know our families first and then you know we had a staff meeting to try to bring everything together to kind of make sure that the players we had that were on our team from that new york area uh, that we tried to get a hold of them to, to make sure that their parents were okay and we were very fortunate that um, both both sal and melvin's uh, families were, were okay uh, and then you know i want to say we for, from a, a normalization uh, standpoint, I think we actually went out and tried to practice to try to just take the focus off of what was going on around us and we tried to use the practice to keep our team together. Um, and uh, But definitely something I thought brought us together uh, as a team and as a country. So very significant time and it had a tremendous impact on a lot of people. Uh, first, just to clarify, is Fanage out for the season or is there still a chance? He because he... Uh, just had the MRI. They literally told me at 10:30 that you know he's going to have to require surgery. I'm not sure. I would imagine it'll be a significant amount of time though if they're going in to have surgery. So I can't say if it's uh, for the year or whether he'll have a chance to come back later on. Um, and then my my actual question: I saw uh, DJ Glaze got the start over Jalen Duncan. Is that yeah. a ro rotation we're expecting, or is there a reason Jalen didn't start? Yeah, no, so, you know, Jalen and Jay Sean both missed some significant time there the last couple of weeks of training camp with injuries. And, you know, we try to bring guys along and we, we've had, we have all the science that we use with our GPSs and player loads and volume. And so uh, we went into the game with the plan for how we wanted to play the guys. But because of the time, the significant amount of time that they both missed uh, during training camp the last couple of weeks, we brought them along the right way. I think they both played some significant time, but just did not start. Hey, Coach. So in a similar vein, uh, Greg Rose uh, started the first series uh, at uh, a defensive tackle. I was just wondering, was that a game time decision to put him in uh, in the first uh, in the first series? Yeah. Again, you know, sometimes as we come out of training camp. Whether it's injuries, whether it's just you know, coach's decision, we made a decision to start Greg Rose. Um, you know, Mo will end up playing a significant amount of minutes. I'm not saying that that's how it will continue, but we just made a, a coach's decision that Greg Rose would start and earn the right to start. And just as a follow up to that, you know, he played two games, still a new player to this team, but you know, what did you see during training camp that made you trust him to go out there in the first game? Yeah, the same thing I saw that made me put him on scholarship. Uh, he's a guy that has come in here um, as a walk-on and has earned the respect of his teammates and coaches with how he plays the game. Uh, he gives us great versatility among the, uh, up front and that he can play both ends, in position, tackle, and nose for us. And, uh, you know, just really a technically sound defensive player. You know, we rotate a lot of guys up front, as you see. Uh, we played, you know, Isaac Bunyan and Daryl Jackson as a true freshman and, you know, uh, Tank Booker. So we, our goal is to try to play as many guys up front to keep guys fresh so that when we get into these four-quarter games, uh, our team gets stronger. And I think because of the depth that we've created, you know, Greg is one of those guys that really has helped us create that type of depth with the way he plays. He has a motor, um, plays with great pad level and leverage, and, and really, you know, does a good job of holding the point up there. So earned the right to, to be a starter for us and, and was really happy with how he played and how all those guys played up front. Right, sir, bro. No. 
Um, and a couple of years ago, you guys had a big win over Syracuse very early in the season. Do you think that the, this team and, and the program now is in a better position to, to build off something like that than you were then, maybe? Yeah, comparisons to me are the kiss of death, so I won't even get into that. Um, as I said, our goal right now as a team is to play to a standard. Um, we wanted to get the 21 season off. I mean, to compare the 19 team to the 21 team would be unfair to both. Uh, you know, we're trying to create an identity here as a t the 21 version of the Terps. Was really impressed with the first impression that they made on me and on our fans that, you know, they played to a very high standard. But like I said, there was still a lot of good coaching that come off of that game where there's some things we got to get corrected. And as we like to say in the coaching world, you usually uh, get your biggest improvement from game one to game two. And I'm very hopeful that that's the case for us. And uh, you know, as we prepare this week, it's really a focus on our execution, um, executing the offense, defense, and special team schemes to the best of our abilities, playing with the great effort, uh, playing with the toughness that we talk about, and playing just smart football. And uh, I'm hoping we can uh, build on that. Back left in the TV stands, Chris. Hey, Coach, um, you know, what do you see from Howard on film that, you know, uh, what do they do on offense and defense? It's the first part of the question. The second part is, you saw over the weekend the FCS team Montana goes into Washington and beats them on the road. Is that something that you use as motivation for your team? We have to be sharp. We have to be at our best to win or something can get us. Well, again, the, the philosophy for whether it's Howard or whether it's uh, West Virginia, to me it doesn't change for us as a coaching staff, and that's what's the beauty of how we kind of set things up for how we prepare because what we do Monday through Friday does not change based on who we play. And so that's where I talk about – we're playing to a standard and not necessarily playing to an opponent. Um, have I talked? Sure, there's no doubt about it. I talked about uh, whether it was Montana beating Montana beating Washington, uh, you know, Northern Illinois going in beating Georgia Tech, you know, uh, whatever, all those different games that have, that have happened. And, and what I said is these usually happen when you play opponents and not to, to the standards. And so for us, our focus will be to play to the standard that we've created as a staff and as a football family and you know all that other stuff kind of takes care of itself if you put the work in Monday through Friday you know as far as Howard on offense and on defense I know on offense you know it starts with their quarterback you know local kid to play here at Wise that I had a chance to recruit a little bit and know a lot about um, they do a good job like I said coach Scott being an offensive guy um, has his hands in there along with Lee Hall who worked here at Maryland um, and they put together a, a pretty good scheme in that, you know, they're running back, big time player, um, very similar to what we faced last week uh, in, in Letty Brown. So for us, it's going to be important that, you know, between the tight end, the running back, and the quarterback, that we've got to do a really good job of, of knowing where those three players are because that's what the front of their offense runs through them. A lot of boots and nakeds where they move the pocket, uh, the big tight end, 6'7, 240. Uh, catches the ball well, creates some matchup issues vertically against linebackers. And then the running back, like I said, is a similar skill set to what we saw last week. And it's going to be important that we get 11 hats around the ball when he has it, um, has the breakaway threat uh, as a runner. You know, defensively, you know, the two inside linebackers are kind of the, the, the focal point of their offense, of, the, of their defense. And then, you know, got a boundary corner number four that does a good job in man coverage. And, you know, they're more of a zone orientated defense, but they will pressure you on first and second down. And they've got some exotic things they do on third down. And also has a really good safety in the back end. So uh, a well-coached team, um, a, a, a team that for us, you know, we've got to make sure we do a good job as we do every week, uh, identifying who the playmakers are and they're on, on both sides of the ball and on special teams. And then just gearing our system and our, our plans to not allow those players to be the ones that beat us. To your right, uh, Ryan. Uh, hey, Coach. Uh, I, I know you mentioned uh, how well Talia played uh, last uh, this past weekend, but I wanted to ask, after looking through the film, what are some aspects um, did you see in his game that you think he needs to work on heading into week two? Well, I think sometimes when you play like Leah does, um, you know, the gift and the curse of Leah is that, you know, he doesn't give up on plays. And, you know, I think a great example of, of Leah, uh, things we can work on was we had a fourth and one call where we ran a zone read and Leah kept the ball and the guy that tackled him was his read. And so what that means, he predetermined that he was going to make the play on fourth and one himself instead of relying on his training 
and that end came up the field, he should have handed the ball off and it would have been an easy first down for us. And then to me, those are the plays we got to continue to work on subtracting out of his game. Um, I thought there were a few plays, he got a little antsy in the pocket, he had great protection and you know, he kind of starts looking all around and um, our goal is to keep him settled in the pocket with his eyes down the field, not looking at the rush. So a ton of things to keep correcting, but I do think overall his decision making was on point. Uh, got the ball to the right people uh, the good majority of the time. And, you know, our goal is to build on the game that he had last week and just continue to work on the execution part with him. Hey, Coach, after that win against West Virginia, obviously Nick Cross and Darheep still were, were big factors to that win. How far can that defensive duo just carry the defense in general as a whole as the season moves along? Yeah, you know, Nick is a special player on the back end where, again, he shows tremendous range as we saw in the interception and then, you know, the big hits that he uh, brought. You know, he has the ability with his speed and his athleticism and size to really impact the game like, you know, few safeties are capable of because he has elite level speed and, and, and uh, the ability to uh, range, but then also is a very physical player. Um, with Tar Eve, I mean, I, I love the kid because when you watch him play, I mean, he's just having a blast out there. I mean, just to see a guy as young as he is and as inexperienced as he is in games, just play with the confidence that he does. We put him in the nickel slot, which is a tough place to play when you play man coverage because that slot receiver has more room to work and doesn't have the necessarily the boundary to be the extra defender. And you know, then you can blitz him. You saw him get a sack there in the game against West Virginia. Uh, he's got it, loves the game. And you can tell by the way he plays. And I just think you'll see him continue to get better and better and better uh, with, every, with every game he plays. And you know, again, we would like to see him on the punt return get a chop because he was a guy that was really talented as a ball offensive skill player in high school that if you know, to see what he can do with the ball in his hand uh, with those punt returns as well. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, guys. We'll have